Hello everyone, how are you today? Um, I'm hoping that I'm not too crooked. I'm a couple of minutes late because I was thinking it looked a little crooked on the camera, but we'll see. Okay, I am just looking on Essential Stencils page because we are cross-posting live both from my iRestore Stuff page. If you've just joined me, iRestore Stuff is where I upcycle furniture and home decor. I still feel like we're looking a little bit crooked here on the on the camera. It might be my tripod, so bear with me while I try and get this correct because we don't want a crooked we don't want a crooked view. But anyway, um, we are cross-posting over to the Essential Stencil page. So if you are watching live on my I Restore Stuff page, you'll be able to see the name of the page. Um, then jump over to Essential Stencil because that's where we'll be get, doing our giveaway at the end of our live today. Um, and I see, and that's where I'll be answering the comments and the questions from. So make sure you're on the I Restore Stuff page. Hi, Rhonda's here, Joyce Ann's here. Candy's here, I can see you all now. Hi, Kerry from Toowoomba, Queensland. Yes, girl, another Queenslander. So excited to see you here. And of course, um, it's often more colder in Toowoomba than it is over here. It's only two hours drive, but it's kind of up a mountain. So, all right, I'm actually cutting up my packaging from um, Essential Stencil here because when we're stenciling, we always want to use um, some off cuts of cardboard to offload our paint onto and so that's all I'm doing because I didn't have some organized. Hi Dorothy. So on my phone if I'm seeing your comments there you are on my iRestore stuff page and if I'm on my laptop over here beside me and I'm answering comments there you are on the Essential Stencil page which is where you want to be for the giveaway prizes at the end of our live. Now if you are on my page you may be from Australia and don't know but Essential Stencil is a stencil company that ships directly, it ships in the, within the USA only at this stage. So Australian friends have sometimes asked me how do you get your stencils? Well if you have friends that live in the USA you can, you can ask them to ship them to their place and they can forward them on to you. Um, but currently it's still just shipping within the USA. All right, I've got my off cut of cardboard. We're going to be making some signs today. And um, I've listed a description in the live that our, the full stencils, there's also a Halloween set available. Actually, I think the bundle is sold out, but there's still, the full bundle is still available. So I've got a link there in my uh, live description where you can order those from. Don't forget during our live today or anytime actually, you can use my code iRestoreStuff and save 10% at EssentialStencil.com. Um, but we're gonna be using a couple of the full stencil sets today. Now I'm gonna be doing this one. Isn't this fun? Welcome to the nut house. <laughs> and we've got acorns. Um, on here as well. You can see that they're sort of in a round, oops, there we go, roundish shape. That's because I'm going to be using a round board for like a door sign or something like that. Now, my round is not quite large enough for the, um, and this is one I did earlier, it's on the reverse side. So what I'm going to do is actually just do the reverse of this. Oh, I'm hoping I brought a pencil. I, oh, I did. That's going to remind me I need to mark some spots here where I did this one last time where I'm going to drill the holes to hang a rope or something because I want it exactly in the right spot to make this centered. I don't want to have this this side and then sort of flip it and then you know not be able to hang it straight. So okay let me show you. I'm going to be doing that one which is actually called Welcome to the Nut House. And I'm going to be using these pie mini sets. I did see Melissa use these yesterday. I'll be doing is the uh, I only have pies for you. It's actually called pies and it's a mini set. Hello Linda and Kathy. Patsy's here. Lisa's here. Yes, awesome. So lots of people watching today. If you are watching again on my I Restore Stuff page, um, we will be doing the giveaway from the Essential Stencil page and that's live at the same time. We're doing this cross posting thing. <coughs> <clears throat> so the Pies Minis has a fun, lot of fun little pie stencils in here. It's got that I only have pies for you. Then it has this one, fresh baked pecan pie. Do you say pecan or pecan? I don't know. <clears throat> fresh baked apple pie, 25 cents a slice. And then the last one is fresh baked pumpkin 
pie, 25 cents a slice, and that's the one I'm going to be using today. I'm actually going to be upcycling a sign. I went op shopping yesterday for the first time in a long time. It is, Joyce Ann says, those mini pies signs are very cute. Um, and I picked up this sign, and it's just, I don't know, some kind of design on there that looks like it's been printed on there. It looks like it's probably an MDF sign, painted black, but it's got this on it. I just gave it a rough sanding over. So if, you, if you're going to reuse signs from your thrift store, give it a bit of a sanding. And it's, you know, it's got its handy hook already there, so there's nothing else I need to do with that except for painting it. So I'm going to paint it first, and that'll give us a base for what we're going to be using it for to add our pies. And I'm going to be using, guess what arrived this week, is my uh, pumpkin spice transfer. So these are rub-on transfers. Comes with a, a sheet set of two sheets, and these ones are a lot larger. And then you've got smaller versions of cupcakes and pumpkin spice lattes by the looks of it with some little coffee beans up here. Um, just looks delicious. I'll be using some of those. The other transfer set in the fall collection, the new fall collection, is this one, <coughs> Scarecrows. And it has the cutest little, uh, there's a girl scarecrow, a boy scarecrow. There's a larger version. Here's the two sets on the back here. So those are still available. Um, don't forget to use my code iRestoreStuff for 10% off. And the full bundle is still available also. So there's that. Okay, <clears throat> painting. I'm going to paint the base of this in coal black. Hi, Diane from Florence, Alabama. Sounds like a pretty place. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to be painting with fusion mineral paint in coal black. And it's just a, a great basic black color paint. And I'm just using a nice flat brush to just paint that on. And we are just going to go over this and recycle an old signboard because I love essential stencils signs. We may even have to have a couple of coats on this. I'm not sure yet. We'll see. I've got a hairdryer here to help me with the drying factor because some of these things do take a little bit to dry. Some little uh, flecks of... Um, it's dried paint that's gotten stuck on the side of the of the pot and so sometimes that falls in and causes these little flecks of paint. Now realistically it's probably a best idea when you're painting to decant some of the paint into a little jar and not just keep going back and forth in your, in your pot because you can kind of contaminate the paint with some of these dried chunky bits that are on the side do as I say, not as I do. It's that kind of a case, you know. I should be more diligent about doing that. I just don't want to keep washing up more containers, so it's a bit of a lazy factor. Okay, someone's just said how they say it. Brenda says pecan. So do I. My uh, grandma and grandpa used to have a pecan tree in their backyard, and she would make can slice pies, cakes, all sorts of things. I used to love her pecan pie. Okay, so that is not covering, um, it's covering a bit, but not a lot. So I'm going to put my brush, oops, we'll wipe off a little bit of that excess on the side of the jar. Here's where it, you know, can sometimes those little chunks can fall in. Um, Wipe the excess off on the side of the jar. I've got a little plastic bag, which is actually a packaging bubble. I just cut the tops off them and use it. They're perfect size for paintbrushes. So a lot of you have loved that tip and are doing that as well. So you can see, I'll show you that's drying still, but if you looked up really close, you'd see that it does need a second coat to just completely cover that sign that was underneath there. So I'm going to just hit the dryer on that. And then we will make our fall themed sign. Hi Dana, Joyce Ann, hi Julie, how are you? Thank you so much for commenting. 
Um, let's go out and maybe do a couple of coats. Yes, so Joyce, we are going to be allowing this to dry. We'll do a couple of coats of this. I'm just going to dry that with the hair dryer. Put it aside and we'll start on this second sign that I've got going today. So let us know. Yes, Essential Stencils just popped in that link there for the fall pre-orders. They are still available. The fall bundle is still available. Um, and if you are on my page right here on my phone, my Iris Store Stuff page, you'll see that link in the description of the live to all of the latest essential stencil uh, sets that are available. You've got your false bundle. Um, there's the Halloween collections just come out, but I think they're just sold out of the bundle, but there are still individual Halloween stencils that you can take advantage of there. There's a cute um, cat, black cat transfer too. Those kitty cats are so cute. Um, okay, so we've dried that. I'll let that sit aside before I just go ahead and paint the second coat on that. But that's how you can easily find a sign existing already at the thrift store because I know a lot of you are sign makers and you like to um, source wood and products for your signs. And with the cost of wood going up, that's one easy way that you can find the, um, the you know, thrift store signs. This, in fact, was another thrift store find. I found a set of these and they called them the little label. Look, you can sort of see that. See that round circle on there? That's where the label was. And it was, it called them placemats. So these were placemats and they're quite nice, solid feeling wood. So this top part was gray. And so I've just gone over that with another essential stencil and created a, a winter themed. So this could be a double sided sign. We've got sort of a fall theme with the nuts going on, which could, this could literally be a year round sign, couldn't it? Welcome to the nut house. <laughs> I think it's funny. That could be a year round sign. So anyway, you can just then flip it over from one to the other. So I'm going to mark where I would probably put my um, drill some holes to create a hanger on the top of this and I sort of so I want it to sort of be central to wherever let's see that's around about that line I'm sort of going by that line there is around about the I'm going with the centimeters because it's easier for me here in Australia we use the centimeters 20 centimeters um, and so well 10 would be the center so I want my, let's go a little bit further out. Let's go 20, oh no, I have to do it that way. A little bit further out. So we, we go either side, to either side of the 10. We've got the 12 there and then the eight here. Now I'm marking a couple of sign, uh, a couple of dots where I could drill holes. And then on the other side, because I want it to be vertically the same otherwise um, we're going to turn it over and it could be the wrong way around you know it's going to be crooked we don't want a crooked sign i can't find where i've placed that circle i have to make it larger there we go so now i can get my probably get some painter's tape i don't know some of you have probably got more brilliant ideas than this oh thank you janet she's asking how my back is feeling yeah i'm still wearing that back brace after a bit of a back injury that I don't know what I did apart from just overdoing it in painting furniture and things and not um, stopping when my body was saying hey Sharon I think you've done enough today so that's what we've pinpointed it down to okay see so here, here's my technique it's probably I don't know it's probably not correct but I'm just sort of eyeballing this dot to where I'm going straight up and then I'm making that fold in a straight line not going over that because that would be curved and then I'm going to add my dot to here where I think it should be let me just see if that looks straight is this technical or what <clears throat> and then I'm going to do the same with the other side I know right probably you didn't think of this did you <laughs> it's just probably not the correct technical if I had drilled the holes then it, I wouldn't have to have to think about this but because I didn't drill those holes earlier I've literally I'm trying to make a stencil on the other side so 
I've got to make it correct. I'm looking for this side. Okay, so we need to go straight and not curve again. It's tempting to curve it against the um, against the curve of the sign, but we don't want to do that. All right. It's around about there is where I'm going to have my holes to drill. So we just want it to go, the grain is going straight up and down on the wood. Same with that side. Hopefully I've got it centered to where it's just right there. In fact, I'm going to put a little bit of tape because I think that that's a bit crooked. So technical. Hello, good evening everyone in the USA and hello, good morning to those of my followers here on my page that could be in Australia. Okay, the stencil that we're going to be doing today, and I feel like I saw that little dot here and I'm hoping that that doesn't show up during my, um, like when I'm finished. You can see that little mark there. What I might do, just, just to distract from that, I've got some white paint on a brush that I thought we could use. Now I've got my tape there. I'm going to have to do that again in a minute. I'll see my dots here. Okay, I'm going to drag this. It's quite a dry brush and I've got my offload cardboard here in case I do need to use this. Just to just offload a bit more of that paint. I was using it to paint the background of a sign earlier. I'm just going to drag that across. Oop, there we go. It's starting to drag. Just create a bit more of a a white background. Can you see that coming through? Just a little bit of a white background. So we drag it and that takes away from that little spot. So hopefully we will do this all over. I'm having to press a little bit more now. If you find that you're having to press a little bit harder, it might be time to add a bit more paint on the brush. And we're creating a bit of a, a dry brush effect. Got some a couple of little patches there, but that's okay. When we get the stencil on here, and this, because we're doing it this way, it will dry very quickly. Instead of putting more paint on my brush, I'm just pressing a little harder with what we've got smushed in those bristles. I know I can get some more out of it. So that's a bit of a dry brush method. And I'm going to hit those ends even more. Not ends, circumference of the circle. That's what we're doing. Creating a bit of a snowy look for our background. Okay, so I'll pop that brush back in here in case I need to use that again later. Oh, Rochelle, of course I could. Put a long piece of tape across the skating side, turn it over, and then I've got a horizontal line for both sides. Yep, good idea. I'm just going to hit this just in case. Yeah, rounds are really good for double-sided. Okay, I'm going to try that idea. Thank you. Let's do this. So on... Well, that's not great. No, that's not going to be long enough. We might be able to use that later. My tape has just split in half. Let me know what you're crafting. Some people love to craft while they're watching our lives, and I love it. I love hearing what you're doing. So if you are crafting tonight, let me know in the comments what are you, what are you crafting? Are you DIYing? Are you painting furniture? I don't know if anyone noticed the new piece of furniture behind me here. I've just finished another piece of furniture. So I'm actually going to just poke this, I'll put it along the line here, and I'll tear it off there. And as I flip it over, so this is going to be the top of our other sign here. Now I can see where that line is going to be. And in fact, I could just, because I don't want to take away from any stenciling that might be happening gives me a bit of a line to go with if I can get that straight. 
And there I can still see my pencil dots. So that will be helpful. So now we've got a line of where we are going straight. And I do think it's a little bit different than the other side. So I'm going to be on a slight like this. All right, that'll mess with my head. <laughs> Welcome to the nut house. Now, I said before, this is, so I'll give you the measurements of the sign. It's an 8 by 16 inch stencil. Oh, and there's a 16 by 9 inch stencil. So the other part of it is the, the nuts. Are they hazelnuts or acorns? I think they're acorns. Um, all right, so what usually would happen, because I've got a, a 12, or I think this is a 13 inch round. Um, it's a slightly different size. It's a smaller size round than what we've got for our nut house. So normally you would have your round going like this. Can you see that, basically? You would have it going like this on a round board. But mine is not going to fit. Um, obviously my nuts go around the outside of here. If I put it in the center, they would come out here. But I don't mind that. And if we put our nut house here, I'll be missing the W and I'd be missing something here. So what I did think of for this particular sign, because this feels fairly central, it's just got the nut on this side, so you could do it either way. But I'm going to put it in the centre, just like so. And this way, because I've measured and sort of put dots where I'm going to have those drill holes, I just need to make it sort of in the centre there. I could really get the measuring tape out and see like which is the nearest end here. It's around about three inches that side and a little bit Oh, depends where I've got to measure it from. Maybe I'll measure it from the welcome because that looks very, bottom of the welcome, two and a half, bottom, two and a half. It's around about even. Does it look, look centered? There we go. So welcome to the nut house. Look, it wouldn't matter if it was crooked with a sign name like that, would it? Welcome to the nut house, really. And then I'm going to just sprinkle some of these nuts either side of this design. So we could make a few just kind of randomly there. So let's get started with our, with our actual sign part. And again, here we could go a bit of tape on either side just to make sure that our stencil doesn't move anywhere now that I know pretty sure that that's going to be the correct um, look if it's crooked we're in the nut house right so it's not really going to matter we've got our awesome essential stencil brushes here to use um, they come in four different sizes actually I've got two of the same size here that's okay and uh, they are available also using my code iRestoreStuff. You can get 10% off anything in the Essential Stencil shop. So don't forget that. That includes your pre-orders for your fall collection and all of those things. So here we go. Just going to dab a little bit of black paint onto the brush and you'll see mm -hmm. that there's a little bit too much on the brush. It's kind of got a big blob there. I'm just going to move this down so you can see it a little better on the sign. Then we're going to offload our brush onto the car uh, cardboard here. So I'm just wiping that excess off. And now I'm going to just work a bit into the bristles of the brush. Tracy says, looks good from my house. <laughs> If it's crooked, it shows it's homemade. I know, right? Oh yeah, good idea, Beth. Um, using Dollar, Dollar Tree or other dollar stores. Cheap way to get around for practicing. Yeah, the rounds that you want to practice on. This one, like I said, bought it at a thrift store. So, All right, so now we're going to just do a nice swirling method. Because I've got hardly any paint on my brush, I can swirl and not get it bleeding underneath the stencil. So that's a good thing. We don't want it to sort of bleed under. Okay, just wiping off the excess there onto the cardboard. You can always go back and dip your paintbrush in to get more paint on the brush, but it's a little bit harder to take it off the stencil once you've, if you've put too much on and it sort of bleeds all under those stencil lines. So the key to getting a nice crisp edges on your stencils 
is having hardly any paint on your brush and I know some of you will be tempted to just have a little bit too much on and think oh it's okay it looks like I've hardly got any on but if you're still getting that bleeding underneath if you're still getting fuzzy edges on your stencils just that would be your key offload even more so it really has to be fairly dry brush so you've hardly got any paint on it and sometimes it depends a bit on the surface sometimes it depends a bit on um, the paint thickness that kind of thing as well so when you get to practice practice on a piece of cardboard undo your packaging that your stencils came in use it as a practice guide and you get to feel about the right amount that you should have on your brush and it is pretty much next to nothing see how I've just kind of dipped it in again and we've got a little bit more on the brush this time so we can go a little bit further but like I always say it's easier to add more on very hard to take it off once you've put too much on and it's created fuzzy edges you'll be sitting there with a little bit of sandpaper trying to sand or make your edges fuzzy edges all straight so <laughs> everyone loves this sign so this one is available in the fall bundle collection and also singly by itself you can get the any of the um, bundle stencils for fall collection you can get by themselves uh, so but this one's in the bundle if you want to take advantage of that because the bundle as they bundle it all together they discount that price heavily if you get it all at once and so these are all available for pre-order at the link right there at the top of my live so here we go let's have a look oh this is really stuck well to my paint hopefully it didn't paint it up didn't tear off nice and crisp lines I'll show you those a little bit closer so you can see and we will wash that one off as soon as I finished here on the live and once again you can either grab a plastic bag or a wet cloth and just wrap that brush in there because I'll be doing some things around the side I may use that black again not quite sure so if we're not sure we'll just leave it aside instead of um, so yeah instead of um, washing it so you can see that nice crisp lines because we have offloaded the brush as much as we can this is my, if you're wondering what this tape is earlier we just made a straight line so that I could see because we've got something on the back side I wanted to make it all even so that when it hangs it's going to hang straight that's the idea anyway all right before I go on to the next part which is going to be adding some of these nuts now remember this is made for a round and you could do that on one side and have the words on the other but I've decided to oh, that would be correct too you would have this this is mainly the straight line if you were doing this on a round it would be the nuts on this side I think I showed you before it on this side but that would make sense because this is kind of straight line to have it on that side but I'm doing it in the center and we're going to throw some nuts down on that in just a minute so let's take a look at the other project I'm working on which is this signboard that I've thrifted from a thrift store and I'm just going to add another coat of that coal black because we want a nice solid coverage now that that's dried I can see right on this edge here there's a little bit of um, the sign the old sign still peeking through um, some of the old signs you might find in a thrift store could have a little bit of a raised finish this one didn't it was quite flat it was obviously a, a print like a piece of a paper decoupaged or something that was just sort of printed on there and so I was able to sand and just give it a bit of a roughing up on the edges and now I'm just going to paint over this a second coat so it will be oh, there's another little blob from my paint pot that's what happens when you when you don't decant your paint into another container 
<clears throat> so let's see do we have anyone working on craft I've missed it I didn't look at the time oh Sandy yes you problem with storing your signs when you don't know which season to store it in because you've made it two-sided so yeah well I kind of I like the idea of the seasons that are close to each other so maybe the winter and um, winter and fall are close to each other but I think if you've got fall you could do a fall design and maybe the Halloween on the other side or something and then you could flip it when it's that week or whatever I don't know we just don't decorate for a lot of things like Halloween over here in Australia so it's um, it's a very I think it's a bit more unique to the USA you guys love your decorating and I love it that you do that <laughs> we take we sometimes we don't even really change much of our decor from season to season over here it's just the same old stuff it's nice to have a little bit of a change up every now and then all right so that is drying super fast it'll be all ready for our pumpkin transfer and pumpkin pie sign so this is going to be a fun one while that's now drying let's have a look yes these are fusion mineral paints um, Perry's asking and so Perry I do have an affiliate link if you do want that let me know in the comments and I can pop that in for you or essential stencil might have it that they could put it up there for me uh, that's on the essential stencil page if you're watching on my I restore stuff page you can purchase that directly from my website if you're in Australia fusion mineral paint um, I stock that as well as an Australian brand of mineral paint artisan so here we go with the not house stencil again while that one's hardening a little bit more and so we're going to add some of these now I did bring a couple of fusion colors to the party today I've got chocolate which is a dark brown so that could be good for the nuts because I didn't want to go too close to a light brown uh, just because of the background we don't want it we want it to stand out there's also this color carriage house which is a nice green might be good for the leaves let me try maybe the brown first the chocolate brown and I'll use a different stencil brush now these um, nuts are actually just the outline so it's not like we're filling it all in or anything let me find a few because I'm not doing this as a round per se I'm just throwing a few things on here I wanted to find an area where I could fit three of the nuts on maybe if I go back this way there's three right there <coughs> We could do some this side, some the other side, and then these little round dots as well. I'm not sure what to do with them. I wouldn't have to. I could tape them off, you know. I could just tape off and do a few. This one looks like a little nut with antlers on it. <laughs> if I do, if you do, if you take them away from the rest of the scene, that's funny. Look, guys, we could just play around like this forever. Oh, I see. Look, we've got three coming in here. Why don't we just do those? And it wouldn't matter too much. Oh, I'll try to keep them away from that. Let's see. This one's just kind of going off the edge a little. And that's okay. We can have it going off the edge. Okay, so I've just dipped my brown paint in. Remember, we're offloading that onto the cardboard. Barbara says acorns can be golden. That's a great idea too. Um, the golden probably would be too close to this I did something was it last week or the week before that was just a little bit too close to the color of the board that I was using and it really didn't stand out very well so I had to kind of rethink that idea I think I added something after the live if you're in the stencil of the month club you would see my finished product pictures on the stencil of the month club page from that so what I'm going to do is actually just go on the acorn I'm going to leave those little dots out for now and we're just creating a fun little decoration if 
wonder if we had some other kind of knots here too. To stencil. And I could then just kind of move it around so that is nice and crisp. I could add this one. I could move him in a little bit. There we go. Then I can add the leaves at random as well. Oh yes, that's a good idea Donna. You can mix several colours throughout. Burgundy, dark gold, lots of different fall colours. You may even add a tinge of green to these afterwards. I don't know. Trying not to get that stencil right beside me. If you're worried about getting the, the design right beside it, just tape it off with a little bit of tape. You can do that. Oops, I got a little bit there. So there's one. It, you can't tell a lot of difference between the black here and the and the chocolate brown colour, but we're giving it a go. And here again, it's another one. And I'm just going to add a bit of tape right here to show you, so that we don't accidentally get that. And then we'll do that for the leaf here. That makes it a little, a little bit more, uh, less stressful, let's say. <laughs> let's say that's just a little less stressful when we can tape it off and not have to worry about getting the brush on there. I'm using for this one the half inch brush, which is one of the smaller ones. So it's ideal for these with the little thin lines. Yeah, it would look nice with a little colour, wouldn't it? Some golden, maybe we could just add some, um, some other things on there like metallics even. So let me just pop that in here. We've got our nuts on that side. We'll do the green just to show you that. The green leaves. So the Fusion Mineral Paint, it does come in these little sample tester pots which are perfect for stenciling because you really don't need a lot on your brush. But if you were going to use the Fusion Paints for say the background of a board, um, probably is better to get the larger pots in some of those more popular background colours, you know, for example, if you can use the white or the black a lot, you could get the larger pots. All right, so using this little, another half inch brush, just a bit of a dip in there. Offloading that again on my board. Oh, great, Gay's got this stencil on its way. She's pre-ordered this one. It's been a day, a bit of a time to unwind. Oh great, I'm so glad that people love to unwind to our crafting DIY projects. It is a great way to unwind, be inspired, watch someone else do some crafting and then you can just go ahead and do your own at some stage. So we're going to pop a leaf right in here using this green and it's called carriage green. So let's see how that turns out against. It's just a matter of having a little try of what's going to turn out nicely against the light coloured wood in the background there. And we've got those outlines again on the green. It is a nice shade of green. It's almost like a bit of a vintage green. It does remind me a bit of an olive, you know the green olives? It's kind of that green olive colour. Have a little peek at that. Yeah that turned out nicely. You can see the green there and there you can sort of see a bit of a difference now between the black and then the brown of the nuts. So let's add a second leaf maybe down here. We could even have a leaf. You could even use the same leaf, you know, because it has, then you've got less to wash, right? I might even just do this one coming off the edge of the page. Page, you know what I meant, didn't you? The board. So coming off the edge of the board here, a little leaf. It sort of gives it a little bit of an infinity feel like it's coming off the board there. I feel like we could do the same down here. Um, right about 
there. Now I didn't add any paint to my brush then, just to have a look and see if I might have enough on there. Looks like I might, maybe just a tad more. This will be a cute round for a door sign. But that looks just nicely spaced out enough that we've got the three nuts that side and then we can go ahead and do our nuts on this side. So see how I did the nuts first? I feel like the leaves were an add-on, like a little bit of an embellishment to the nut idea. So now that we've got that sorted, we can do a similar thing on the other, pa on the other page, <laughs> the other side. <clears throat> so grabbing our brown again, and then we'll do our pumpkin pie sign, which I'm looking forward to. Co uh, chocolate this is. So Fusion's dark brown called chocolate. They've also got a nice lighter brown, which is called Woodwick, which would be lovely, except it's just a little bit lighter and I felt like it might not work on there. But you could just do a lot of little transition-y kind of um, colours on these as well. You could even fill them in. We do have our um, essential stencil also has these artist brushes, or we call them sometimes detail brushes. And they help to fill in some of these if you want to add some other colours to them, some other shades. I'm just going to go over this here and also, oh, we might need that leaf again. Where's my, there it is. Cover up the hole. Um, what was I saying? I forgot. Uh, we also use the detail brushes for closing up the bridges in the stencils. So see how our O has a little bridge and it make, creates these little gaps because the stencil requires bridges in order to function as a stencil. Otherwise you'd have bits missing from your letters and words and pictures. And so that's how stencils um, are put together. And so sometimes those detail brushes are great for just going over and filling in any of the little stencil lines <coughs> or gaps. Um, there's a nut. I'm liking this. All right, let's see where else can we put that. Another one up here. Um, again, I probably should just use the same nut because I think it's the same and then I don't have to re touch up the um, the tape. Okay, one up the top here and then we'll place one sort of down here. Yeah, uh, some people prefer the bridges open, some people like that stenciled look so that, but then others prefer the closed for certain fonts especially um, to have that closed look. more uh, flowing, I guess. Oop. The tape is sticking down. Okay, there's one, two, and another one just down here, I, I reckon, maybe facing this way, right on the edge, something like that. Then we'll just add the leaves as that sort of second part to <coughs> be look like an embellishment. I do like the idea. I love how we can just do these things and then you guys come up with your own additions like doing the metallic or adding some extra colour to these acorns. All right, so that's that. Grab our green brush again. Carriage house, this is called. I guess carriage houses must be green. And once again, we can just use this one leaf unless you were going to just use it in the in the same way that it is on here. Um, hmm. Have one down here, right about so. That was a bit quicker to do. I probably had just the perfect amount on the brush that time. Uh, another one coming. I've kind of put my nuts in together, haven't I? Maybe you have one coming off the side down here. As if it's going away. Yep, I do need.
in a bit more. Oop. Don't forget to hang around and join in the conversation here. If you've got any questions about stenciling, let us know that too. And let's see if I can fit one more leaf coming onto the board up here. But again, you could just do this any way you like. Um, yes, we are giving away prizes at the end of our live today, so don't forget to join in the chat over on Essential Stencils page where we are live in two places at once, my Iris Store Stuff page and also the Essential Stencil page. So there we go, we can take this tape off here now, see if it gets that ready for cleaning. <coughs> and we will go on with our other pumpkin sign, but yeah, I like that. So I've got my tape up here that's kind of taped so that we could tell uh, whether there's a straight line going on there or not and I may go ahead and do some more on this afterwards but that gives you a great idea of a fun idea for welcome to the nut house I can probably take my tape off now which was kind of just keeping me in line it was keeping me straight because what I did was if you missed that earlier I did this another time on a different live and I've got this line across here and some wonderful person in the comments suggested I do a big piece of tape there then make it go around the sides so I could make sure that this is the same uh, direction because if we want if this was like this and then the other side made it go crooked that would not be a fun thing so now I've got some little drill lines where I can make my holes hang a string on there and hang that up so there we've got the green leaves the brown you could add some other bling to that to make it look special as well. So let's have a look at our other one that we're working on today, which is the pumpkin pie. Oh, I love the acorns too. So if you missed earlier, I just got a, a sign that was already made. See the little hook on there? Um, it was already a sign in a thrift store and I just painted over their design because we're going to make something even more special, I think. <laughs> so there's what we did earlier today. There's our Iris Store Stuff code for if you need to remember that. And we're going to be adding pumpkin pie sign and pumpkin pie transfers. Don't they just look delicious? It's making me drool a little bit. Um, I love the pumpkin pie transfers. So we're going to be using the pumpkin pie sign out of this set and these are the minis and they come in a set of four. It says three but there's a bonus. The bonus is I only have pies for you. Oh my goodness that's so cute. What a pun. All right so I've painted this infusions coal black and we're going to think about which pies we might use for that and we need to cut out our oh where'd my scissors go cut out our transfers from the sheet so they all come on this white sheet like this there's two sheets in a set i think you could do this you could do a pumpkin pie on the side let's have a look at this we could do a pumpkin pie on the side with a large pie in fact some of these might be large enough on this stencil this transfer see those different sizes so these ones are larger you could fit an entire huge pie on here and have this out to the side that's one look you could have this one coming in here that would fit also um, I love the cupcakes they're cute but because it says pumpkin pie I feel like I want to put that pie on uh, or the other idea which I had which I probably will do I like the idea of this being in the center so we're going to center that and we'll we use a white to pop that in the center and put our sign in the center. Look, I'm eyeballing it, but just for those who are paranoid, I will get my measuring tape and measure and make sure my sides are the correct measurement. And then I want to put a pie either side. So I could do this one and this one, although these ones, oh, where are they? There's two different types of pie here. So I had a thought that we could add this one here and then this one over this way we could do the larger one so we'll cut out some of these and have a look which way how good they fit how well they fit so we're just cutting around the design that you'd like to use so these are single use whereas the stencils you can use over and over again 
just wash them clean. Those are cute sizes. I like the way they kind of both point inwards. These I think are a similar size. So if we did um, the small one that way and then this, this one I think is a slightly larger size pie. So it's a matter of looking at your different sizes. I want one of these right about now. I think that would look great. Let's just pretend it's sitting here beside me <laughs> and I'm going to have a drink of it any second. Let's see, are they the same size? I think one is slightly larger than the other. So we could have a larger version here and then this small one here. I just like the direction that they're facing. Rhonda, it's not your favourite? I do love a bit of pumpkin pie. We don't have it over here as much uh, because we don't do Thanksgiving in Australia because that's an American tradition. But I do like to make a bit of pumpkin pie around Thanksgiving time in my house because my husband's American and we like to... I do like a bit of pumpkin pie. I also like pecan pie. So these ones are both facing this same direction. I kind of wish it was facing this way. So what do you think? I could do a large one there and a small one there or should I go just both the smaller ones? What do you think, guys? Let me know your thoughts. Should I go with this on this side even though that's facing that way or we could do this larger one facing this way. That makes a bit more sense. Um, and this larger one facing that way. Two larger or one large, one small. Thoughts? Let me know in the comments. I'm just going to cut this off a little bit here so we can visualise that just a little bit more while I measure and get this centred so that we all exactly the right amount either side. Hmm. Yep, I eyeballed correctly. Two small, the two small ones, two small ones, do the two small ones. Oh, one person saying the small and the large. Smaller one, large one, small, smaller. Hmm. I know, I like a bit of balance. This one's getting a bit close to the edge for my liking. I think it's going to actually have to be unless we shifted this and then it would all be off center. So I think that is going to be the consensus, but I, yeah, keep your thoughts coming. All right, so I'm going to use this color picket fence. It's just a really nice bright white. And with the bright whites, doesn't matter what paint brand you use, sometimes you'll need extra coats because whites tend to need a bit more coverage because you know, you're doing white on a black, for example. So it may take a few coats of this one, but that's okay because we can do other things like transferring pies while we wait. <sighs> Those drinks that like a, a pumpkin spice latte would be really nice about now because we're literally in our winter weather, which is probably like fall for you guys. Um, don't center your stencil if you use two different sizes. Yeah, that's what I thought. And then it would just kind of look a little bit off balance. Now, I think that I'll be fine, but if you're worried that this is too close to the edge for stenciling, put a bit of tape here, uh, but I think we'll be good. So I'll just hold my stencil nice and tight. And we've got some tiny little dots there that we wanna make sure we get all of those. So we can do a little bit of pouncing as we go along. Then we've got some cute little flourishes. Isn't it funny how you don't realize all the little finer details that are on a stencil until you start to um, do the stencil itself. I'm just looking and seeing this pie, seeing if there's one that's tiny like that on the transfers. No, not quite small enough. Sometimes, you know, I um, use the transfers instead of the stencil that's provided right there. So if there was a, a pie transfer big enough to cover that pie, but these are the smallest, so it's a little big. But if you were doing this on a mini wood, you could actually remove that and just put pumpkin pie and put the transfer on there. So you could do that. Okay, carefully moving my hand. Sandy, you prefer pecan over pumpkin pie? I think I probably do too. I think I prefer pecan over pumpkin. But look, 
I'm a bit of a dessert fan, but um, in recent years I've tried to delete sugar altogether from my diet. It's not easy at first if anyone's done that, but um, it certainly does make for a healthier you if you can. But yeah, so my pie visit, my pie intake is very much non-existent these days. We can dream, we can wish, and I do allow myself a treat every now and then. So there's that. All right. Oh, I love this font. I think it's very handwritten kind of a font. I'm just noticing again, noticing the details as I stencil, enjoying myself as we go. Hope you're enjoying watching. Thank you so much for all your comments. And I do love to go and watch um, and read through some of the comments afterwards. If there's any questions or anything like that that we might have missed, I'll go back and have a little look. Make sure we didn't miss anyone's comments. So, Oh, someone just mentioned a pecan cobbler recipe. That sounds nice too. I wonder what the fruit is inside the cobbler, but I can imagine pecans crushed in the cobbler on top would be lovely on any like apples, peach kind of cobbler, even mixed in. Guys, you're making me hungry. What is the time over here in Australia right now, where I am in Queensland? It is nearly 11 o'clock. Oh, that means I've got to get a wriggle on. We're nearly up to our hour, guys, and I haven't done my transfers yet. I've been taking my time. Here we go, 25 cents a slice. If I do need a second coat of this, I'll do it after the live. Don't worry, I won't make you sit through that again. Um, but you, you can very much do that after you've done your transfers. It doesn't have to be right away. There we go. Nice crisp. I love, I love the black on the white. I think it makes a nice crisp looking stencil, you know? So let's do that. Let's hurry ourselves along, Sharon. Okay, got my white brush. Pop that into there. I think I'm done with all the stenciling. I could just dump it in the water. Oh, I just want that drink. Okay, now got our transfer tool. This will be super quick. Don't you worry. <clears throat> to do our transfers, we just remove um, the white paper backing. I'm going to stand up so I can see where I'm putting this. So the transfers, a lot of people comment on, oh, I love the black, I mean, I love it on the black background. I don't know that it matters which way I'm going with this. I'm just going to stick it right there. It's around about the center. And um, it does. It really turns out lovely on a black background. I've done some of the um, the older, like the pumpkins and those kind of transfers that we had last year. I've done some of those on a black background. They really do look nice. Orange on a black background, gorgeous every time. Now this paint is still I mean, it's touch dry, but it is still drying. So let's see what happens with this transfer. It should stick well, in fact. I'm making sure I've got this right on there. So we're just now removing the... Yep, we're good. Okay, just removing that background. So if you do happen to see some rubbing in areas, um, because the coal black is a very matte finish, that will just show up there as a bit of a rub on there. And so all I have to do is just coat this with a nice sealer and that will all seal in and you won't see those little edges. Okay, so next one, super easy and super quick. Oop, don't wanna put that upside down. Pumpkin pie. Here we go. And again, if you missed it earlier, all I've done for this sign, the, the board that I'm using was from a thrift store that I went into yesterday, saw there was a sign, had the hook on the back of it, was all good to go. I just thought, I'm just gonna paint over that. It looked a bit 
cheap and outdated and this is just looking lovely handmade sign ready to I don't know I might pop it in my shop I might actually put it up in my house for Thanksgiving who knows there we go that was super easy to do so just rubbing that down and we are about ready for our giveaway so if you're on the essential stencil page we are getting ready to do a giveaway if you're on my I restore stuff page thank you guys so much for watching um, you can use the code I restore stuff remember this is a USA shipping only at this stage save 10% on the bundle of all of the the fall designs that these are a part of or you can buy them singly so that's let me see I'll just have a little look and you can follow me at I restore stuff on all of the platforms all the social medias wherever you hang out that's where I probably am too at I restore stuff welcome to the nut house is what we did today we also did our fresh baked pumpkin pies for a bit of fun let's have a look and our congratulations go to our winners today Mary and Krina and Deirdre Mary, Krina and Deirdre you're our winners today on Essential Stencils page live um, you just need to email support at essentialstencil.com let them know that you are a winner on Sharon Hankins live today and they will uh, ship your um, prize to you let them know where to send it so if you are watching the replay comment the word replay at the end of our live because there's another prize going to someone within 24 hours after our live has finished so thanks guys so much for watching today and I'll see you again next week on Essential Stencil ready for another DIY live and giveaway. Bye.